Hello, folks. As in case you're wondering why this was never streamed, this is just one of the little light episodes we do on Alternating Fridays, where we have little one shot, little just between us players, just a little bit of fun. Nothing overarching or affecting the plot in any real shape or form, but this one might be a little bit different because this leads into this could be a decent prologue into the season finale of of uh, Starbase Adventures, Star, or Star Trek Adventures, Cerberus Station. So, and we, as you can see from the little Discord overlay, two players have decided to join me, which means that this uh, is go probably going to be fairly quick, but it's still going to be quite interesting. Well, I hope anyways. We'll find out if it actually is. Uh, so, to set the scene, this is on board the USS, uh, Ar the USS Arian. Uh, Commander Keevan has taken, or has received permission to head out into the Carceri Nebula. Not, you know, not through the typical way in, way out that has been taken, you know, the quote-unquote safe space. No, he's going into the unsafe gases. That is because at the insistence of his uh, longtime friend, And I just had her up. Now where did Keevan's friend go? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Lieutenant Tarty Alia, a Grazerite uh, exo-archaeologist who has been studying uh, uh, Janus III, the platinum head the size of Pluto's moon Charon. There it is. Uh, over the last several months, uh, her team has meticulously scanned literally every surface of the head and has found several very minute incisions only a few centimeters deep but they are the only flaws within the uh, quite smooth uh, platinum sheen aside of course you know the mouth the layers for eyes etc you know what i mean uh, these appear to be at regular intervals and no matter how the head is flying, these incisions always seem to be pointing in the same direction. So no matter how the gravimetric shears cause everything inside the Carceri Nebula to bump, shift, and shake, bump, shift, shake, and shimmy, the head seems to be tethered somehow through an invisible means uh, to something. Uh, Lieutenant Jargovim has recently upgraded the sensors of the station to more thoroughly study the properties of this unusual nebula and has been able to discern several small uh, structures actually residing deep within the Carceri Nebula itself. Uh, with this in tow, the USS Orion has been dispatched to one of them. Cool. So... Who wants to bring which characters for this uh, little mini adventure? I'm thinking I will bring Ela for science. Ela for science, okay. And if Doctor Sulkin won't be coming, uh, Abbott can say she's on board just to have a doctor. Sure, that sounds like fun to me. Uh, Gate jumper, who do you want to bring along? I was going to bring Specialist Zach. I am not surprised with that. Okay. Nope, I was hoping that you would. <laughs> okay, so we have um, Lakila. Let's hot jump to the bridge of. Jump to the bridge of the Arion, where Lakila is here, and Specialist Zak is running from eng running with engineering. Uh, to flesh everything out, we'll have Mr. Mud flying. And I believe it, we had... I think it was Keel at Running Tactical. Uh, mm, nope, that wasn't him. No. Was it T? Or was yeah, it Rafani? Uh, TM has tactical systems. We'll take him. Oh. Okay. 
All right. Commander Keevan has taken the chair. He, he's a little bit nervous. First time literally flying the ship into danger, into harm's way. Yeah, plasma storms and such. Yeah, plasma storms, uh, heavily explosive compounds flying around. One wrong, or one, ah, one wrong burst of phasers could ignite an entire pocket. You know, that sort of thing. So what you're saying? Tell is you what, we're... I had God last night. Talk about unpleasant gases. Ew. Computer, make sure that the, the uh, air uh, systems are working properly in the bridge. <laughs> air air circulation func is functioning at one hundred and ten percent. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be safer. <laughs> <laughs> Mud, do you want to work together and plot a course? I believe that would be a wise idea, uh, Ensign. Alrighty. And just because... Yeah, so if someone could take Mud. So let's have Mud roll Command Con, and Lakila can assist with Insight plus Science to figure out the best way through the nebula. Science. Yeah, so maybe if, yeah, if Gate Jumper could take uh, mud, please. Mud. Okay. Well, so this is a difficulty three test. Well, Ela got two. Nice for Ela. And what did Mud get? Mud got two. So that's uh, one momentum. Mud so of course set. X. Keevan leans back and steeples his fingers. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Mud, please take us in. Oh, yes, and I forgot the most important NPC of this scene is Lieutenant Tarty Alia. Who looks over it. You can't help but notice how she's glancing at Keevan with uh, a bit of pride in her eyes. As the USS Arion heads through and into the nebula itself. It is, thankfully, because you guys have done such a good job, it is a relatively seamless, well, as seamless as possible, more like run, ah, more like moving from one back road onto another. A few potholes here and there. The ship lurches ever so slightly in one direction than the next, followed by a sharp downturn, but it's nothing that the shields and structural integrity can't handle. Uh -huh. Reminds me of the Badlands. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Abbott in sickbay, uh, several crewmen over the next couple hours come to you requesting assist or requesting um, motion sickness medication. I will have stocked up on the Dramamine. <laughs> ah, space-grade Dramamine. Don't go home without it, kids. Event. Given the uh, nature of the nebula, the risk you are taking flying into it, it is a several-hour journey. Uh, do any of you guys wish to chat amongst yourselves or do anything in the meanwhile? Ela would be doing passive scans on the nebula, trying to get like the gas composites and see if it changes from like where the pocket where the station is to the surrounding areas of the nebula. Okay, uh, roll me and roll me reason plus science, please. Uh, difficulty of two, and the ship can assist with sensor science. I'm gonna spend that momentum for a third die because cautious science and all. Sure. That Cautious science is a good thing. Yes, that would uh, <laughs> that's a critical fail, and you know, I'm shooting for a 15. I got one. Well, you know. So I'm assuming the ship will not be helping. <laughs> nope, ship is helping. Yeah, ship can I help. Got my okay. I got two successes. Yeah, ship can definitely help. Sensor science for the ship, please.
Hey, we got our momentum back up. Yes, he did. All right. Nice work. So, uh, so Lieutenant Jargovim's been scanning the nebula from the station for several or for several ah several weeks now, and the USS Arion sensors pretty much collate what he's been seeing. Uh, the nebula is comprised of several volatile gases that hypothetically should have um, reacted and decomposed by now, or at least drifted apart. Uh, most nebula typically go towards either a state of dispersal or a state of star formation. This nebula is n hasn't been doing either of those. Uh, this nebula has been... It seems it has been kept in place in some form of static... Well, not static shock. Not, eh, not, a, not a position of scientific static. Molecular static, that's the term I'm looking for. Um, however, whenever it seems, um, however, according to Jargrim's sensors, and now it has been confirmed with the USS Arions, that whenever there is a reaction within the nebula, there appears to be a counter reaction elsewhere in the nebula, basically keeping the nebula in, well, in place. It's in a, it's being kept in the state of stability despite it wanting to not be precisely so when it tries to react there's something causing a negative reaction to stabilize the the all the reactions in the nebula mm -hmm. all right hmm. interesting very uh mr zach are you up to anything nope sitting around engineering waiting for whatever needs to be done all right you notice that as soon as you enter engineering, it, several other ensigns make a po find polite reasons to go elsewhere. Mm. Perhaps it is what you had last night. <laughs> Gog is not exactly agreeing with us. <laughs> or it could be the yeah, space it. sickness. <laughs> no, pretty sure it's the Gog. <laughs> yep, it's the Gog. You just hear the computer. Warning, biohazard detected <laughs> in engineering. So eventually, the USS Arion makes its way deep, deep within the nebula itself. So deep that you can almost start seeing light from the stars from the other side. Very, very faint. When all of a sudden... Um, both the Lakila sensors and MUDs, as well as uh, Lieutenant Tarty Alias, all chime with the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A proximity sensor. Uh, Alia just sort of lets out a yelp of excitement. Commander Keevan orders MUD to bring the ship to a halt and full sensor sweep. Full sensor sweep, aye. So what you see is this thing. Uh, looming out of the uh, red and orange mists like a deactivated lighthouse in a bank of fog, a double-pointed obelisk, roughly 300 meters tall, uh, faintly glowing uh, faintly glowing, ah, faintly glowing blue along its vertices. It is hovering in front it is hovering in place, uh, seemingly not caring about anything ar or any of the tidal actions happening around it. It is emanating. Um, so remember the sensor fields around the um, around the exo engine core that al allowed a stable omega molecule to exist. Yes. Something slightly similar to that. It's emanating. Uh, alternate, it's emanating an alternate universe bubble, or an area Ooh. of space where physics just decides that it doesn't like the rest of the physics outside of this zone, so it is creating its own world of physics, full of blackjack and hookers. <laughs> so Ila, considering he has astronomical astronomical phenomenon, chronological anomalies, physics, and sensor operations as focuses, is going ooh. Scan the thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, he can scan away, 
and this can be either assisted with the ship's sensor science or Zach's uh, insight engineering because there's a lot of things to learn about this thing. Would I be doing control science, reason science? Um, insight science, please. Difficulty of... Oh, depending on how many successes you get depends. will basically tell you how much information I give to you about this thing. Fair enough. Um, for Ela's uh, activation, I'm bumping his insight to attend. Okay. And who's going to assist? Is Zach going to assist, or is this yep. going? To... I want to know. I want to know. Cool. So if you have anything along the lines of structural engineering or particle physics or strain or alien technologies or strange screwy shit, that I, any of that would be good here. Which would actually be a hilarious uh, focus to have, really. Great. Courage, Ed. I think that's going to happen sooner than later. <laughs> okay. Now, is I'm that. I'm rolling my one. Sure thing. Haha. -ha. Okay, so that is one or two. Ah, four successes from Lakila and one from Zach. Cool. Okay, we so. Get momentum off that. Uh, you will get one momentum. Can we not get the momentum and get more information? Well, you can save that momentum for a question. Ah, there we go. I mean, Elon's yeah. also acting as the science officer, so yeah. we get a free There you question. go. Perfect. That is true. That is true. So. so, what are we seeing first before we ask the yeah. question? Okay, so what you are seeing yes. is this is the reason that the sensors from the station did not detect this is obviously because the universal bubble, I'm just going to call it the bubble from now on, uh, the bubble basically made it trans. Well, the size of the structure for start is very small in comparison to other astronomical phenomenon. The universal bubble is also has also made it very difficult to detect unless you were looking right at it or had extremely fine sensors and it was a very clear day in the nebula. The structure itself appears to be a, assuming the chronological dates have not been screwed around with the bubble. It appears to be about 500 years old, or 5,000 years old. And it is projecting so it is projecting a tether field of uh, neutrinos, tetrion particles, and several complex particles who you're not entirely certain um, what they are without a significant analysis of the bigger picture. Um, there is several of these particle beams heading to other points within the nebula uh, in a pattern that one could f see as linked to, or very similar to that of a Tholian web. You know, connecting multiple vertices through ge connecting multiple points with uh, geo geometric vertices. And however... Similar to how it looks like yeah. in real life. Precisely. As well as a, a fairly large uh, particle beam heading towards the transwarp hub. I was say, assuming, I'm assuming that is also the reason why Janus 3 is interlinked. Yes, that is actually quite quite correct. Um, Tarti Ala, ta ah, Tarti Alia notices that, yes, this link, this pers ah, this one points directly at um, incision 32 beta along the head's uh, cranial, western cranial region. Can we determine how many filaments are going out from this prism to the and what they're connecting to? Okay. Like, we, you said one of them goes to the transwarp, one of them goes to the head. Yeah. Can we determine where else in the nebula they are ah. connecting to? Of course. Now, I, I should clarify, I'm sorry, it goes to the head, not to the transwarp hub. My bad. Oh. That's okay. That was poor, poor choosing, poor word choice on my part. All in all, you're able to determine that there's. And now, if that's the, that's your free question, so uh, yes. you determine ten, uh, ten points from this, from this spot. Going, ten? yeah, not including the one going to the Janus three. So ten points, and then the eleventh would be Janus. Correct. 
can so. we do a task to see if we can map out where in the nebula they are going? Ooh, that would be an interesting task. Um, just let me ta answer Zach's uh, question because he did use an engineering thing on this. Um, based on your analysis, Zach, the obelisk seems to be made from some form of obsidian-like rock. Um, it's fairly smooth, fairly shiny. Um, it sort of catches and reflects the light of the nebula around it. Uh, it appears to be... There doesn't appear to be much of an, a visible inside of this structure from your sensor readings. Um, but you are detecting a, a remote interface. Uh, sort of like a... What's the word? Uh, a, uh, ah, a communications array located pr near the equator of the structure. Interesting. Now, sorry... Um, Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Zach. Now, is that something that we could access from here, or would we have to go there to access the communication hub? Well, that's... Well, that would be a communications test to see if you can interface with it out here. Do you want to risk it? Sure. I say risk Let's, it. I'm going to say, yeah. Uh, I'm going to try to access the communication. Okay. Zone. So this I is going help. to be a control plus engineering test. And the ship can assist with communications plus engineering. This is going to be a difficulty of four. And since there's only two of you and I don't get, that means I don't get much threat, I will spend a little bit to increase the complication range 18 to tw or 19 to 20. I have the ship for you, Gate Jumper. Okay. Would you like the third, the momentum for a third die? I am going to be happy to take that. By all means. Well, that's three successes already, and nothing from the Arion. Do you have Cautious? Do not. I'm... Did you give Zach his activation? I have not. Are you going to give him Cautious? Cautious? <laughs> I, I, I think I will. <laughs> Even though he doesn't strike me as Cautious, hey, that... No, you know, I don't can... think so. Well, maybe when we actually it. fully flush him out, yeah. maybe we'll rethink that, but... Maybe. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Yes. If you want to get cautious, I'm not going to stop you. So, okay, re-roll that zero. Okay. Well, I don't. It's not that I don't see, see him as cautious. He's just a very brash person. Yeah. I'm not seeing him as very cautious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> considering most of my things are uh, emergency and jerry rigging, and <laughs> just not sure, cautious. Um. All right. So. Uh, uh, Reroll that one zero, please. One, uh, come on, baby, you can do this. Give us this last. There it is. That's the fourth success yes! you need. <laughs> Nicely done. Nicely done indeed. So the USS Arion opens a communications or opens a type beam communications frequency into the communications receiving node of this structure. And for the longest time, nothing happens. Uh, la uh, both are Lakila and Zach. Both of you are noticing some strange behavior within the Arion's computers. Um, it is it's as if it, the computer is performing a systematic defrag uh, defragmentation which doesn't necessarily mean is a bad thing per se especially on a ship that is apparently haunted but it appears that this is completely uh, un, uh, unprovoked by you guys and is most likely the obelisk sorting through your files I was thinking 
are we getting anything like obviously it's going through our files are we getting anything back from it not at the moment no okay am going to let it finish okay i <laughs> since we actually made the connection i think that um unless commander keegan feels that i should let this, try to stop this from happening i'm gonna let it continue its process fair enough so commander keegan uh a because he's not here, uh, Commander Keevan agrees with you entirely. <laughs> and suggests that you just keep, maintain a close eye on the data. Um, roughly about ten minutes of tense nothing goes by. Uh, systems flip on and off for briefly as the computer reaches their various triggering algorithms, but nothing does that or nothing, even, <laughs> nothing even close to potentially dangerous occurs. Self-destruct. <clears throat> Intent. What? <laughs> <laughs> Deactivate. <clears throat> the uh, eventually, your vid screen goes blank, uh, the, and it's replaced with a uh, digital represent or in the out of the blackness. Um, blue pixels begin to form, uh, coalescing into the shape of a alien species that I just realized I forgot to upload a token for. However, um, it is an elongated... Uh, to call it humanoid would be a stretch of the imagination. It is an elongated human or face with a fairly tall forehead, uh, two eyes on either... two eyes, one on either side of the head, roughly two-thirds of the way down, uh, heavily inset into thick brows, no obvious nose, and four tentacles that uh, drape down where its mouth should be and dangling off-screen. Interface successful. Language identified. This is a Starfleet vessel. USS Arion. Captain. Uh, Captain Crawford. Current in command. Commander Keevan. Occupants on board. 53. We are the Salak. We are the Wardens. State your intentions. Bloody hell is that? <laughs> Ela will stare at Keevan going, Sir? Uh, this point is the point that I wish that Keevan would have been able to show up tonight, but hey, say with me. Uh, Keevan subconsciously st takes a step forward, straightens his tunic, and begins the... We are... Uh, and, be and enters into the standard... Uh, Federation greeting. What is your purpose within this, within the prison? Keevan is, is Keevan is thoroughly confused, and he looks to you guys for ideas on the matter. Did he say I... prison? We're in the nebula. This is a prison. A prison for what or for who? This is a prison for the prisoners. <laughs> There's some roundabout thinking, if you think. So ye be a warden. <laughs> Correct. This module's... Long... This module's function is as a warden for the prison. How long has the prison been in place? 
accessing your accessing computer records of USS Arion prison up by Starfleet standards 5182 years 7 months 4 days Who be your prisoners? The prisoners are an extra-dimensional invasive species called the Crawl. They sought to invade this area of space. The Salak warded them off. Are those the creatures that we encountered in the Slingshot space? There is not enough information to justify or to come to a conclusion. Do we have access to the shuttle computer records from that time? Uh, well, you can see if you can uh, ha create an uplink back to the station. Do you want to do that while the uh, Salek are tied into your system, tied into your computers? Uh, no, would... let's keep our let's keep our system separate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's not cause the entire station to go into shutdown. Yeah, that happened just briefly a little while ago from the uh, Akashi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably for the best that we don't do that. But hey, I'm the GM. What do I know? You said it, not me. Yeah, I know. One of these days I'll figure it out, but I sure don't. One of these days will catch me in my uh, lie that I'm not a good GM, but it's not yet, so. <laughs> okay, so, what are your plans going for? What are your plans, gentlemen? We're peaceful explorers. What? <clears throat> that much is certain. Starfleet's intentions are peaceful, exploratory in nature, diplomatic in frequency, tactical in rarity. Salak would have had positive relations. Who are the Salak? If you say we are the Salak. <laughs> we are the Salak. We are what's we are what the Salak left behind. Digital uh, a digital representation of artificial intelligence, mirroring the collective intelligence and morality of the Salak. We are all that remain of the Salak. Yep. You uploaded yourself to a bunch of computers? That is accurate. Oh boy. Bloody hell. We got tin cans walking around breaking shit. Now I got this. <sighs> Sounds about right. So this device I'm talking to. This, you are the warden. And you are guarding the prisoners. Where are the prisoners? The prisoners are in the anomaly. Do they have physical form? Not as... Not as... Uh, physical form would be incompatible with physics of this universe. Well, that's concerning. Says the physicist. So ye not be of this universe, is what you're saying? We are. The Salak were of this... Uh, the Salak were of the... of this universe. The Salak... Sac, the Salak uploaded... Or, the Salak detected the prisoners' attempts to invade this universe and it imprisoned the prisoners. You be protecting this universe from this outer dimensional attack. This is accurate. 
bad feeling about this. <laughs> Are you able to detect whether the attack is still imminent? The prison is still operational. The prison fortifications, I am detect is, I am detecting a 1.2 percent degradation in field strength. Three nodes have failed, causing a, or causing a stable, uh, ah, da, 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 causing a stable ingress point into the prison. Are the nodes failing? Is what what causing the what's causing the gravita gravimetric waves? Standing by, accessing records. Nodes were destroyed. Nodes were destroyed by a cybernetic species roughly 182 years ago in an attempt to breach the nebula, or uh, breach the prison. They breached... You be speaking of the Borg. Yes. That is accurate. What are the location of these nodes? Uh, the pixels on the view screen shift. To, um, or, ah, they disperse from the physical or from the appearance of the Salak into a rough, ana rough analysis or a rough uh, representation of the Carceri Nebula. Uh, several hundred points blink green, probably indicating the uh, other structures similar to this one. Uh, three of them immediately go red, um, and you recognize that as the location where the uh, car, where the tunnel to the nebula exists. Oh, wonderful! So the nodes being destroyed is what creates the stable tunnel. This is accurate. Are we able to create new nodes to replace these ones that have been destroyed while still keeping a stable tunnel? This is uncertain. Your current level of technological sophistication does not, or uh, is incompatible with uh, engineering techniques necessary to create a stable or replacement pylons. We have access. So to you're saying technology. we're not smart enough to fix it? Correct. This is accurate. Of course it is. Well, Zach, remember we do have access to the entirety of the, what the Borg knew. What does this have to do with the statue? It is the Watcher. What it be watching? It watches for the prisoners. Are there you know what I love? Circular logic. Always, always like that. Elements of the Watcher are spread throughout this area of space. Should the, in, the next question? Should the ah? Should pris ah? What it is watching for? Other ingress points of the Trule. Or, I'm sorry, the crawl. I take it that should uh, the watcher be needed, they the pieces will assemble. This is accurate. So, at memory serves, hasn't some pieces been towed? <clears throat> uh, let's, I don't believe they have. I mean, you, the USS, the USS Nighthawk has found a couple. Uh, it's All found, right. it's found one of the legs on the Scorpio homeworld, and it's found a torso in the, in one of the, uh, ah, near one of the Lashunt uh, research stations. Because if memory serves, yeah, didn't your brother have his spiritual thing with one of the pieces? Or 
Uh, he did have a, yeah, he did have a uh, spiritual connection. And then he left, and I had to scramble to find a new way for this plot to come ah, together. Okay, fair enough. Uh, fair enough. Fair yep. enough. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> I was like trying to remember that, and I'm like, wait a second. Yep. All right. Oh, this is confusing. This is accurate. I'm not doubting that. It's confusing for us to comprehend. Way beyond my comprehensions. <laughs> not a word, lad. <sighs> I wasn't going to say anything. I don't know what you were talking about as Edel rolls his eyes. At this, at this point, uh, Kievan thanks the giant, scary, tentacle monster for his sage words of wisdom, and decides that it is best to return back to the station to find out more information, and possibly ask Captain Crawford what he's going to do. <laughs> Are we? Were we able to get a map of? Uh, so he displayed a copy of the map of where all these things are mm -hmm. in the nebula. Yep. Can we record that? Mm. Yes. It has been <laughs> uploaded to the. Ways. It has been uploaded to the computer's data banks. Mm. Let's see. Elo's gonna see if there's any correlation to the um, source of the graviton fields that we keep running into, um, and where the. Uh, points are located throughout the nebula. Ooh, an interesting idea. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a reason plus science. The ship can assist with computers plus science. And this is going to be a difficulty of three. And if you have particle physics or... I just uh, have straight physics. Uh, I'll let physics work in this. I mean, I also have astronomical phenomena. Yeah, that could work too. It was computer science for the ship, correct? That is correct. Okay, so you like Ela got the three successes. And that's one more from the ship, so that's one momentum. Man, you guys are rolling well. I'm glad we're doing this today and not, you know, during the finale. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm okay with, with this continues through the finale. No, no, no. Let's get it all out of our system now, please. <laughs> uh, so... This is where some interesting patterns begin to emerge. Well, even more interesting patterns. Uh, so it seems that the gravimetric shifts that you're feeling are... Um, what's It's sort of a directed energy uh, discharge being sent from um, particular nodes within the transwarp hub outward to be absorbed into the uh, pylons at which point the pylons will appear to draw sustenance from such energy. So is the transwarp hub kind of like the where all of this is originating from? Yes. Oh, it's the center of the hub. That's where the when the Borg created this hub, they fucked with it. <laughs> the out of character aha moment of when the Borg created the hub, they realized that there was a center energy source that everything was coming from, which is why we haven't been able to get into the center of the transport hub. Mm -hmm. It's the power source. So they have one of these crystal, the main crystal, in the middle of the transport hub. You know what? Just because you put all that together, I'm giving you an extra point of um, determination. Okay. You solved a mystery down. that has been in the works since, I think, episode three? Whichever <laughs> one was the giant spider mission. So. Okay, so. That, that's an aha moment. <laughs> right? And my other, my question is... I mean, I don't know if this would be in character, out of character, or what. But, so, 
one of the failing portals was that the one one of the ones that we blew up uh like when the, we attacked the Tholian in the crossover no like when they had uh, the big war that that didn't affect this that did not affect this no um there is still roughly i forget the exact number i i think it's about one third of the portals are or one sprue of the portals are still completely inactive and, in the transwarp hub yeah in the transwarp hub and okay they, they have been since you've started but no you haven't blown up any of those yet Okay, so none of this is our fault of it failing or anything. It was because that's no. just part. That was just part of the transwarp hub itself. Precisely. Yep. Okay. Now, which means, is gone. I'm just saying, which means we now need to get in, in touch with the interlink and see if we can actually get inside of the center. Yes. Yes, indeed. And I believe that is a good place to end this little prologue session, unless you guys have any further questions to ask the big scary tentacle monster. Now, no, does no. this have anything? I ask him about the Tholians. Because the Tholians were f screwing around with the hub, too. Yeah. Negative. But from the other side. Okay. So, out of character question kind of hmm. thing. Since it's integrated itself into the Ariane systems to be able to contact with this, I don't be think able... we need to. <laughs> I'm like, well, it's not necessarily integrated, but like, we've created a communication link. Yes. Will we be able to access the communication link at any point in time to ask the big scary thing in head floating head thing if we need to ask a question? Uh, that will be a probably a task of some sort done from the station side. Can we do it to a node that is closer to the station? Now that you have a series of map or a series of locations, uh, the closest one of these obelisk pylon things is a, is still a significant distance away. Uh, for example, the station or from the distance, um, yeah, using the transwarp hub as the center of the nebula, um, the Station is roughly Earth's orbit away, so I think that's one AU. Mm -hmm. And then these, or this particular pylon, is roughly the distance. Um, let's see, maybe it was that far along. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it is approximately uh, one light year from the sun, or from the center. Then the closest one you can find is roughly the distance of Pluto. Um, okay. Still deep uh -huh. within the nebula, it's or still deep within the Carcer Nebula, but it's possible you could reach it. So, all right, one light year is approximately thirty-two or sixty. Wow, sixty-three thousand two hundred forty-one <laughs> AU's. Yep. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. And, and the, I mean, mm. it's still going to be closer if it's the distance between Earth, uh, the Sun to Pluto. Oh, totally. But at least with. I still am iffy about trying to connect the Arion to the station, but yeah, the, the... at least at least we have like a way that we might be able to recontact that but I do strongly suggest that we keep the Arion away from any other things for now and use that as our contact point. <laughs> yes. Yep. Pluto is roughly thirty five AU from the sun depending on where it is in its orbit. Mm -hmm. So, not impossible space, but not terribly out of the realm of connectability. Correct. I mean, we connect to the Midas array outside the nebula, and it's at a further distance. So True. But you're able to sort of sli you know, sneak through the stable opening. But yes, you can <coughs> probably figure something out. After all, your Starfleet, you're... You guys are smart it's people. It's what we do. <laughs> yes. That's very true. Yes, it is. And we do have a connection now, so that would be... We're halfway there to doing what we need to do later. Mm-hmm. So. Wow. Yep. And so wow. I think this is a good place to end the prologue. Sounds good. Cool. So we shall... So I will try to get this uploaded to YouTube to generate a little bit of buzz for the finale in a week's time. So, I'm hoping that it'll be fun. I'm hoping we'll have more players. But hey, see you guys then.
All right, Bye. man. Bye.